Okay, so here we are and we're going to now start talking about nuclear waste. So for SL, you don't need to know about radioisotopes or radioactivity, that's just a HO topic, but you do need to know about the disposal and impact of nuclear waste in terms of high level waste and low level waste. So because we use radioisotopes in a large range of areas, it means that nuclear waste is not just something that we need to think about if we're looking at nuclear energy. So in Australia, we don't actually have nuclear energy. We do have a, a nuclear reactor in Canberra, in ANSTO, which we use for research and for radioisotopes. But these things still produce nuclear waste. So worldwide, there's about 440 nuclear power plants, uh, probably more than that now, which produce about 16% of the world's electricity. Um, it has advantages in terms of the energy, energy density we get from uranium um, and the fact that it gives us no air pollution or greenhouse gases in its production <clears throat> other than water. Um, it is abundant. Um, Australia itself has a fairly large amount of uranium um, and we'd be able to supply energy for about a thousand years, which is looked longer than our oil reserves. However, it is still a limited resource technically. Um, it would run out. The main concerns that we have with the use of nuclear power is safety concerns. Um, and the rising costs with ensuring that it is safe, the processing and public discomfort and outcome outcry about the disposal of the waste and where the waste should go. So the increased use of radioisotopes for diagnosis as well as treatment primarily of cancers um, means that disposal of nuclear waste is a growing concern for the medical industry. So it's something that we need to look at during our options. Mm. So there are two main types of nuclear waste. There's high level nuclear waste, um, and this gives off ionizing radiation for a very long time. So ionizing radiation is the dangerous radiation. The fuel rods that provide the energy um, in fission reactors, okay, are considered high level waste. And you see these in the cooling tanks here, um, and of course, um, referred to in the Simpsons. <clears throat> so these rods, so the fuel rods that they use in nuclear reactors, need to be cooled for several years um, in deep pools in the plant. So these rods are stored uh, using the high heat capacity of water to be able to cool them down for many, many years. So this is needs to be stored for um, tens of thousands of years, depending on how much of the fissionable material is left after the fuel rods have been spent or are no good for um, use anymore before it can be disposed of safely. So this is when we're talking long time, we're not talking a few years, we're talking a very long time that this waste needs to be stored and kept away from the public in order to be considered safe. Mm. So the characteristics of this, and I encourage you to make uh, note of this, is that it has a very long half-life, so it takes a long time for us to lose half the fissionable material. It has high activity with high ionizing radiation um, and it's very hot. It's generally used in nuclear uh, as nuclear fuel from reactors um, and we get waste products from the processing of used fuel and also nuclear weapons. When we store it, we vitrify it. This means we turn it into a glass-like substance, which is then sealed in containers and then buried underground in granite or deep mines. Um, there's some nuclear waste disposals in Australia, in the centre of Australia, and there's also um, some in things like Death Valley in the US where they think, uh, where they're more seismically stable, that is to say that they're not near fault lines or going to be subjected to things like earthquakes, which could crack open the barrels and cause an environmental catastrophe. The issues with these are that it can still leak into the water table if any of the uh, the areas that it's being stored in um, become unstable or if the barrels crack, then we still look at this issue where we may end up with um, fissionable material and, and um, nuclear waste seeping into the water table, um, which is what actually happened in Fukushima in the um, disaster that happened in Japan a number of years ago. So it remains active for a very long time um, and also one of the other concerns in modern political climates is that this nuclear uh, waste can actually in some cases be used for nuclear weapons. 
On the other hand, we have low-level waste. So high-level waste is primarily nuclear weapons, manufacturing, and energy production. So low-level waste is what we're talking about in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, these are wastes that give off ionizing radiation for a short time or give off high ionizing radiation. It includes wastes that can come in contact with radioactive substances, so gloves or clothing or paper, plastic bags, anything that may have come into contact with a radioisotope um, needs to be disposed of carefully as well. And generally this is placed in cans and buried in landfill for disposal after it's been stored. So um, it has a short half-life, so the time it needs to be stored is quite short, um, and then it can be disposed of in landfill. Okay, so um, it has fairly low activity. So a lot of this comes from uh, the medical industry, so where they've been using radioisotopes, so the equipment um, and various things like that. Also in the manufacture of smoke detectors, there's a very small amount of radioactive smoke detectors which makes them work. When they're manufacturing those, we can get um, contamination of radioactive material as well. Okay, so when we do this, it is largely stored on site um, until the radioactive level is a safe level and then disposed of as normal. Okay, so landfill pass, um, and various things like that. And then um, some of that is treated and released into, if it's liquid, released into the oceans. Mm. So our low level waste and high level waste require different levels of um, treatment depending on how um, dangerous they are. The different methods um, are primarily based on the radioactivity level. So if it has a large amount of radioactive material still present, then it needs to be treated uh, with a lot more respect and a lot more carefully than if it's just low level ionization. Okay, so low level waste is stored on site until it um, has sufficiently decayed. If it's not possible, it's shipped to disposal facilities which package it and then bury it. This is still being buried though. Okay, for high level waste, so uh, waste that is still quite radioactive, um, as we mentioned before, the power rods are stored in pools which act to absorb heat energy as they cool down um, and protect the workers from radiation. Then the fuel rods are dissolved in chemicals to recover any um, uranium ore that may be able to be recycled um, or plutonium. Then the liquid from this is vitrified and turned into that glass that we talked about, placed into barrels and uh, buried deep underground in storage facilities. So these are usually a long way underground. They are done in tunnels in areas where there's limited to no um, seismic activity, okay, in order to protect um, people and um, ensure that this material is um, quite secure as well. So that's it. For your exam questions, what you need to be able to do is usually compare and contrast the difference between low level and high level waste. Um, remembering that the low level waste has low ionizing or non ionizing radiation and is stored and then disposed of in using normal landfill. Okay, so that's it for the waste, and then we've just got one little bit of this, and then we're done.